Well, hi, it's Mark Nelson, and I have an interesting story. I want to show you a couple things, right? These two instruments right here so have, they don't look anything alike, but they share a really interesting history. And it's a history, I'll put this back, that begins with an 11 year old boy in Hawaii. So I'm gonna tell you the story of how Joseph K. Kuku invented the Hawaiian steel guitar and what an interesting story it is. So Joseph K. Kuku lived in, uh, on the island of Oahu. He figured out that if you took the guitar the slack key guitar that the Hawaiians played, and slack key guitar is just a regular guitar, it's just a regular old guitar, but it's tuned to an open chord. And he, Joseph discovered that if you ran a piece of metal along the sides of the strings, he said he found a piece of he, he said he found a piece of metal while walking alongside the railroad tracks, and he ran a piece of metal. It made a neat sound. So what he did was he put the guitar in his lap, like this, and he would play. an entirely new way to play. They called it steel guitar. I think he said he invented the, first came up with the idea in, in 1889. By the turn of the 20th century, uh, already Hawaiian musicians were fanning out across uh, North America, across the world really, uh, through the different ex exhibitions, through what they called shiitakas, and they were everywhere the musicians went. They played ukulele, they played the new steel guitar that nobody had ever heard before, they danced hula, which nobody had ever seen, and it, people became fascinated. Hawaiian musicians played uh, everywhere in North America. One of the first things to happen was some guitar builders in Los Angeles uh, decided that they could create guitars that were more suitable for the Hawaiian style of playing with a bar, and that would be louder. And one of those uh, builders was a guy uh, named Weisenborn. My friends uh, Verna and Steve Youngen have, uh, are going to play you a beautiful uh, Hawaiian song called the Hula Blues from that period of time on one of those very, very first Weisenborn guitars. I think, I think uh, he told me it's from 1925. So, Hula Blues. <laughs> Blue. Tell me, have you heard those who love blue? Can't imagine what you're feeling blue about. You simply glide and take a slide, and you want to jog, you wriggle, you giggle, you wiggle to the hula blue. Me sway and palm tree. Warm, friendly sea breeze. When you hear the mellow steel guitar, 
Mona softly under tropic stars Oh, 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 oh those who love blue Tell me, have you heard those who love blue? Can't imagine what to feel in blue about Simply glide and take a slide And you want to shout, you wriggle, you giggle Wiggle to the hula blue You wriggle, you giggle, you wiggle to the hula blue You wriggle, you giggle, you wiggle to the hula blue The new style of guitars with the with the Weisenborn, the Kona style, or some of the other ones, um, were very sweet. Uh, they but they still weren't loud enough for the big big crowds that these musicians were playing with. So a guitarist uh, named Beecham went and talked to uh, a family of radio repairmen named named the Dopiera Do brothers. It, to see if they could come up with a way to make a louder guitar. And what they did was they invented a guitar where they took the principles of a uh, loudspeaker and they essentially put a loudspeaker made out of metal inside a guitar. And it's, they called it uh, the National Resonator Guitar. I think it was a national com guitar company. And those guitars... Uh, were quite a bit louder and they became very very popular uh there there were various designs uh built some had round necks for playing like a guitar some had square necks so you could only play like uh on like a steel guitar and the nationals among other things they were called dobros and if you're a fan of bluegrass music you might know that the dobro is one of the main instruments in bluegrass. The, the dobro and resonators were t went a different direction too, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But first I wanna talk about one more direction that this whole thing went. And it turns out it's the same guy, Beecham, who was, who wanted, the dobro still wasn't loud enough for him. Eh, like a guitar player, he just always wants to get loud. So, he went to somebody else and, and basically they said, maybe we could amplify this electronically. And sure enough, they came up with what's the, the first, arguably the first production electric guitar. The, the Rickenbacker, they call it a fry pan because it looks like a fry pan. Uh, Immediately, all the other guitar companies jumped on the bandwagon and started making electric steel guitars. This makes no sound at all unless it's plugged in. There's, you know, it's just a slab of wood. And I've got, I've tuned it to a chord. And you use a, you use a steel bar, just like Joseph figured out. Finger picks uh, make it easier to play. And you just slide up and down the strings. talked about the development of the electric steel guitar. We talked about the development of a little bit about the dobro and the resonator guitar. One more strand to all of this. Uh, this here's a resonator guitar. Uh, this one's about probably the close to close to 60 years old. It's an antique like me. Um, and the other little strain here is I mentioned that not only did the you know, the Hawaiians played with everybody. I mean, uh, and, and then the country guys sort of picked up on, the, on that style. But the blues guys did too. The self-professed uh, inventor of the, of the blues, W.C. Handy, describes hearing somebody play 
uh, gu guitar in around 1903, he said, in the manner with a steel bar in the manner of the Hawaiians. So they, there were a number who played like that. But, the, but a number of them picked up another idea. And they would take, I'm going to show you this, that. That is a bottle neck. They call this a bottle neck, and that is the neck of a bottle. It's a genuine bottle neck. And they would put that on a finger, one finger or the other, and use that to... And that became a whole completely different strain of, of music. Um, there's noted, noted, noted bottleneck players all over uh, the the early blues days. And to this day now, even even uh, such great players as, as uh, uh, Bonnie Raitt was a, you know, was a fantastic bottleneck player. And there's tons of them. Um, and again, a whole other world of music. You went from this Hawaiian, this Hawaiian kid coming up with this new way of playing guitar, and that led to inventions of new kinds of guitars that led to the invention of the first electric guitar. Uh, eventually, they put pedals on the steel guitar, even, and that became the country guitar. The style I play, uh, that they still call the Hawaiian steel guitar, or sometimes they'll call that a lap steel guitar. So those, that, all those styles of music, and then it went off and influenced the blues styles of music too. Uh, it's just, an to me, it's an astonishing story how one little thing can lead to so much great music. So I'll leave you with a uh, little blues here. And uh, thanks. <laughs> Bye.